Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, lecturer in computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video we're going to learn how to create a project network diagram using Microsoft PowerPoint 2010. This video we will examine a list of activities, their dependencies and durations that you will find in a project, list the tools needed to draw a project network diagram, we're going to use the activity and arrow method to draw the network diagram, Finally, we're going to finish off by identifying the critical paths through the diagram and calculating the overall duration of a project. So I have PowerPoint open in front of me here, and on this table in blue, we have typical information that we need to draw a project network diagram. In con the first column here, I have a list of activities, and I'm just calling these activities A, B, C, D, and so on. There are nine activities in total. In my second column, I have the dependency dependencies listed. So each activity listed here is dependent on other activities being completed. So I can see for example that activities A and B have no dependencies, activities C and D are both dependent on A being complete and activity E is dependent on activity B is complete. So we work this out until we get to the end of the table where activity I is dependent on activities F, G and H being complete. Finally, in the third column, we have our durations. These could be hours and days. For our purposes here, we're going to assume that these durations are in days. So as a project manager, I will have activities. I will have previously worked out the dependencies and have also have estimated the durations for each activity. I now want to draw a simple project network diagram using this information. Now, in this next slide here, I've made uh, on the table over here, the previous table, a little bit smaller so that we can uh, use it for drawing our diagram. And in order to draw a project network diagram, we really need three items. We need um, a node like this with a number in the center. We need a, a duration, activity name and its duration. So the activity A has a duration of one day in this example here. And finally, the activities are represented by arrow, hence the name, activity on arrow type of diagramming. And so we just need these three items here to draw a simple project network diagram. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to move on to the next slide here and give myself some uh, free space. I've got the same table up here in the top right hand corner to see my activity names, their dependencies and durations. And I have my three items here on the top left hand corner that I need as a, as a bank of tools to draw my network diagram. So let's get started. So I can see from my table that the first two activities, A and B, have no dependencies. So this means that they can both start at node number one. So I'm going to copy and paste um, a circle representing a node, which is... Um, I've got number one in it already. And I want to put the two activities, so on the arrow, so I'm copying and pasting an arrow down. I copy and paste the second arrow down to represent the second activity, which is activity B. And I know from my project network diagram rules that every activity has a start and an end node, so I'm going to put in an end node for this activity here. I'm going to call it number two. And stick in an end node for the second activity. I'm going to call it node number three. Each activity must have a name and a duration, so I'm going to copy down this um, text over here. And I can see from my table that activity A has a duration of four days, so I'm going to type that in there. And activity B has a duration of three days, so I'm just going to change the text here to B equals three. So I've now got my first two activities drawn on my project network diagram. Only seven to go, so let's move on. The next two activities, activities C and D, are both dependent on activity A being complete. So no two represents the end of activity A, so that means it also represents the beginning of activities C and D. So let's put in the two arrows to represent these activities. So here's the first arrow here. I'm going to draw an end node for that. So and give that a name, a number of four. Put in the next activity, which is um, activity D. I'm going to have to draw this down here a little bit and give it an end node. And this is node number five. And I'm going to put in the two activity names and durations. So activity um, C goes up here. And from my table, I can see that activity C has a duration of two days. And my activity D from the table has a duration of five days. So let's put that in here. D equals five. So now my first four of my nine activities are listed on my project network diagram with their arrows, names, durations, and of course a start and an end node for each activity. The next activity, which is activity E, is dependent on activity um, B being complete. So I take my arrow down, copy and paste. Activity B is terminated at node number three, 
and I'm going to put in a terminating node for activity uh, E as well, so put that down here. And this will be node number 6. Put the name and duration on the next new arrow. This is activity E. And I can see from my table that activity E has a duration of 2 days, so that means E equals 2 there. So, so far so good. We've got the first 5 activities listed with their start and end nodes. Let's continue on. I can see now that activity F is dependent on C being complete, so let's put that in. So there's the arrow for activity F. Let's make that a little bit shorter. Put in an end node for that. And this will be node number 7. And put an activity, an arrow, uh, and the name of this activity is activity F. So I'll put that label on the arrow here, which will be F is equal to 3 days duration from my table. Let's do the same for activity G. So put an arrow down. Activity G, an end node, which will be node number 8. Now, if you're reasonably experienced in um, project network diagrams, you'll know that uh, I am not I'm making an error here. Just doing this on purpose to show how these things work. So, activity G is equal to 2 days. And finally, the next activity, which is activity H, I'm going to put down the arrow for that. H, put an end node in, which would be node number 9. And the name and duration of that activity on the last arrow, which is activity H, which I can see from my table has a duration of one day. Okay, so now so far so good. I've got my all my activities according to the rules of Project Network Diagrams drawn so far. However, I can see from my table here that there's only one activity left. It's activity I with a duration of three days. And it is dependent on activities F, G, and H being complete. Now, as we know from the rules of project network diagrams, we can't have an activity starting on three different uh, end nodes. So I can't have an arrow representing I in each of these three. So what I need to do is I need to merge activities F, G, and H into the one node. So what I'm going to do here is remove two of the nodes. I'm going to remove node 7 and node 9, just to make this easier. And um, we'll point my arrows up to node number 8. And change the activity F arrow down here and move the text. And as uh, node number 7 doesn't exist, I'm going to change that to node number 7 there. So now I've got a merge, as it's called, of these three activities, F, G, and H, into the same end node here. I know now that I can put in the last activity, activity I, here on the right hand side, give it an end node, which would be node number 8, the last node, and put on the final activity name and duration, which is I equals 3. So now I've completed the drawing of my project network diagram. On this next slide here, I have a tidied up version of the same diagram, just drawn in the way that you might expect to see it in a textbook or so. And it's just spread out a little bit differently, but I've got the same activities, the same nine activities, the same activity names, the same durations, the same start and end nodes for each activity listed here. You pause the video here if you want to study the table and see how the table relates to the diagram. Moving on to the last slide, I need to be able to identify the critical path through my project network diagram. And as you can see from this path there, diagram, there are three paths. There's paths through activities A, C, F and I. A second path through activity A, D, G and I. And a third path through activities B, E, H and I. And if I add up all the durations, I can see in my bottom right hand corner here a list of the activities and uh, the combined durations of each of these activities. So I can see, and it's highlighted in red here, that the second path uh, adds up to 14 days and this is my critical path through the project. So as a project manager, this is the path uh, that I would manage most closely to make sure that the activities on this path uh, are met according to the schedule given for them. This also tells me that the overall duration of the project is 14 days because that's the longest path through the project. I hope you found um, this um, how-to video useful for, uh, for you. Um, thank you for your attention.